Hello students, we will continue with class 11 business study chapter 3, public, private and global enterprises. In today's discussion, we will discuss global enterprises. MNCs, the other name for global enterprise is, as evident from what we see around us, are gigantic corporations which have their operations in a number of countries. These enterprises operate in several producing multiple products with their business strategy extending over a number of countries. They have an impact on the international economy because of their capital resources, latest technology and goodwill. So they are able to sell many products in different countries. Some of these corporations may be slightly exploitive in nature and concentrate on selling consumer goods and luxury items which are not always desirable for developing countries. Features of these corporations are, these corporations have distinct features which distinguish them from other private companies, public sector companies and public sector enterprises. These are, first of all, huge capital resource. These enterprises are characterized by processing huge financial resources and the ability to raise funds from different sources. They may issue equity shares, debentures or bonds to the public. They are also in a position to borrow from financial institutions and international banks. Secondly, foreign collaboration. MNCs may collaborate with companies in the public and private sector. They are usually various restrictive clauses in the agreement relating to transfer of technology, pricing, dividend, payments, tight control by foreign technicians, etc. Big industrial houses wanting to diversify and expand have gained with MNCs in terms of patents, resources, foreign exchange, etc. But at the same time, these foreign collaborations have given rise to growth of monopolies and concentration of power in few hands. Third feature of MNC is advanced technology. These enterprises possess technological superiorities in their methods of production. They are able to conform to international standards and quality specifications. This leads to industrial progress of the country in which such corporations operate since they are able to optimally exploit local resources and raw materials. Product innovations. These enterprises are characterized by having highly sophisticated research and development departments engaged in the task of developing new products and superior designs of existing products. Qualitative research requires huge investment which only global enterprises can afford, their marketing strategies. MNCs use aggressive marketing strategies in order to increase their sales in short period. They possess more reliable and up to the mark market information. Their advertising and sales promotion techniques are normally very effective. Since they already have carved out a place for themselves in the global market and their brand names are well known, selling their products is not a problem. Next feature of MNC is expansion of market territory. Their operations and activities extend beyond the physical boundaries of their own countries. Their international image also builds up and their market territory expands, enabling them to become international brands. They operate through a network of subsidiaries, branches and affiliates in host countries. Due to their giant size, they occupy dominant position in the market, centralized control. They have their headquarters in their home country and exercise control over all the branches and subsidiaries. Thus, on the basis of its features, we can point out certain benefits of MNCs to the host countries such as investment of foreign capital. They facilitate transfer of capital from countries where it is abundant to countries 
where it is scarce. Transfer of technology. MNCs can be used as a vehicle for transfer of superior technology to the developing countries. Creation of job opportunities. MNCs set up facilities for production and distribution of goods and thereby create employment opportunities in the host country. Utilization of idle resources. MNCs help in the utilization of idle resources of the host country and thus generate income for the country. Creation of healthy competition. MNCs increase competitions and break domestic monopolies. Next important feature is professional management. MNCs kindle a managerial revolution in the host countries by professional management and employment of latest management techniques. Growth of domestic firms. MNCs can help the growth of domestic firms to supply them materials, components, etc. over the years. Several ancillary units have grown to provide support to the MNCs. Next benefit of MNC to the host country is higher standard of living. Because of their superior technology, MNCs provide a large variety of quality products to the people in the host country. This helps to increase their standard of living. Integration of the world economy. MNCs facilitate integration of the economy of the host country with the world market. They encourage international business of the host country and also international brotherhood. Despite so many advantages of MNCs, some people do criticize global corporations. Some people argue that MNCs should be turned out of the country due to the following reasons. First, transfer of old technology. MNCs usually transfer outdated technology to their host countries. Secondly, disregard of national priorities. They are bothered only about their interests and not concerned with the problems of the host countries. Next, killing of domestic firms. People prefer products of MNCs as compared to domestic firms. As a result, domestic business gets ruined. Next criticism for MNC is depletion of natural resources. Excessive use of natural resources from production requirement causes their depletion. Next, creation of monopoly power. MNCs dictate their own terms of doing business which the host country has to agree to. Thus, MNCs are a mixed blessing for the host country as they have both positive and negative impact. The last topic of this chapter is joint ventures. What is the meaning of joint venture? Joint ventures mean when two businesses join together for a common purpose and mutual benefit. It gives rise to a joint venture. A joint venture can be flexible depending upon the party's requirements. These need to be clearly stated in a joint venture agreement to avoid conflict at a later stage. A joint venture is the pooling of resources and expertise by two or more businesses to achieve a particular goal. The risks and rewards of the business are also shared. The reason behind joint ventures often include business expansion, development of new products or moving into new markets, particularly in another country. A joint venture can be formed by any of the following ways. First, two parties, individuals or companies incorporate a company in India. Second, the two parties subscribe to the shares of the joint venture company in agreed proportion in cash and start a new business. Thirdly, promote a shareholder of an existing Indian company and another party which may be either an individual or a company may collaborate to join Clee Carry on the business of that company. All joint ventures require government approvals. 
if a foreign company or a NRI is involved. A joint venture must be based on a memorandum of understanding signed by both the parties highlighting the basis of a joint venture agreement. The joint venture agreement must also state the necessary government approvals and licenses which will be obtained within a specified period. Now let us come to the benefits of joint venture. Joint venture can prove to be extremely beneficial for both parties involved. First of all, increased resources and capacity. Joining hands with another or teaming up adds to existing resources and capacity enabling the joint venture company to grow and expand more quickly and efficiently. The new business pools in financial and human resources and is able to face market challenges and take advantage of new opportunities. Secondly, access to new market and distribution networks. When a business enters into joint venture with a partner from another country, it opens up a vast growing market. For example, when foreign companies form joint venture companies in India, they gain access to the vast Indian markets. Their products which have reached saturation point in their home markets can be easily sold in new markets. They can also take advantage of established distribution channels that is the retail outlets in different local markets. Otherwise, establishing their own retail outlets may prove to be very expensive. Another important advantage of joint venture is innovation. Joint ventures allow businesses to come up with something new and creative for the same market. Especially foreign partners can come up with innovative products because of new technology and ideas. Next, low cost of production. When international corporations invest in India, they benefit immensely due to the lower cost of production. They are able to get quality products for the global requirements. India is becoming important global source and extremely competitive in many products. There are many reasons for this. Low cost of raw materials and labor, technically qualified workforce, management professionals, excellent manpower in different cadres like lawyers, chartered accountants, engineers, scientists, etc. The international partner thus gets the products of required quality and specification at a much lower cost than what is prevailing in the home country. Another importance of joint venture is established brand names. When two businesses enter into a joint venture, one of the party benefits from the other's goodwill, which has already been established in the market. If the joint venture is in India and with an Indian company, the Indian company does not have to spend time and money in developing a brand name for the product or even distribution system. There is a ready market waiting for the product to be launched. A lot of investment is saved in the process. To conclude, in today's lecture, we have discussed global enterprises their features, how MNCs are beneficial in developing countries like India, what are the criticisms for MNCs. Then we studied about joint ventures, their meaning, different types of joint ventures and their benefits for both the organizations. In the next class, we will begin chapter 4 that is business services. Thank you.